Hello and welcome to this online service of worship for the benefits of Chalcombe and Bath St Stephen. I'm Philip Hawthorne, the Rector, and it's great to welcome you. We are a gathered online community, so even though you may be watching this on your own, you're united to everybody watching this at any time through God's Spirit. And it's wonderful to be together with you. You'll find all the information you need uh, if you scroll down below this uh, video and all the information is down there particularly draw you to the gospel reading uh, maybe you'd like to scroll down and read that um, while I while I read it to you just join me in reading that because I'll be referring to it quite a lot in my sermon so I don't know how you've come to this maybe you've just been patiently waiting and now is the time and you can enter into it fully at peace or whether you've just done the ironing Put, done the washing up, put other stuff away, done some washing and you've just sat down with a cup of tea <laughs> and you're just a bit tired. However you've come, we're going to spend a few moments just being still, allowing the centre of our being to descend from our heads down to our hearts. Because ultimately, when we listen to God, Yes, of course, we listen with our ears, we hear the words, but we're opened with our heart and we listen to God with our heart. So let's be quiet for a moment. You can close your eyes if you like. Maybe you just look at the candle there and I'll lead us in some quiet together. So be aware of your breath. We're going to breathe out. And in, and out, and in. Allow that breath to be fully exhaled, and out. Precious Holy Spirit, you are God alive in us. You are closer to us than our breathing. We pray that you may make us attentive to all that you are and to all that you want us to be. join with our first words. We gather in the name of God, who is Creator, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The world belongs to God, the earth and all its people. So reading from Hebrews. Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart, and before him no creature is hidden. But all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one whom, to whom we must render an account. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathise with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. A moment for you to stay with those words while I just check that I did press the record button. And now the reading uh, that I'll be preaching on from Mark, Mark's Gospel, chapter 10. 
As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except for God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honour your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own and give all the money that you have to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. But Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sister or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions, and in the age to come eternal life but many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. Let's be quiet again for a moment. Living and loving God. We trust that you have something for us today, for each one of us in our own way. A word, a thought, a feeling to meet us where we are. To give us that bit of solidity where we feel shifting sand. To give us that inkling of hope where we feel despair. that assurance of love. In Jesus' name, Amen. There are some very kind and generous people in the world. I'm sure that you are some of them. One of them, who is no longer around in Bath, last week allowed me to use their house in Cornwall for a short holiday. Actually, no, it wasn't their house. It was their home. It was a wonderful cottage. And my favourite part of it, I think, was in the kitchen. I've never before cooked with an agar. You don't if you're from Watford. In Watford, the nearest you get to an agar is a lager. Oi, mate! Two pints of Heineken and some pork scratchings. <laughs> anyway, I absolutely loved it. Not just the way it slow cooked a local rack of lamb or belly pork, apologies, vegetarians, and roast potatoes and bread, but just the way it was. It was there. I grew to love its warm, gentle, reassuring presence. You can't do anything quick or hurried on an agar. It is what it is. The hot and the warm plates, the hot and the warm ovens, there they are, waiting, welcoming. And I'm extending the wonder of this agar by welcoming it to be the star image in my sermon. Hold on to it. Hold on to that thought. You probably, if you've 
ever lived with one or know, know one in uh, someone else's house, you'll know what it means. But I'm sure you can imagine. As we reflect on that gospel passage about the man asking after eternal life. One thing I learned and loved in my theological training was being encouraged to interrogate scripture. When you read it, to notice anything that made you curious or that stuck out or maybe raised questions. And it's in this passage, the part when Jesus in verse 30 said that following him will guarantee a hundredfold houses and fields and family. It kind of looks like a prosperity gospel. Follow God and God will reward you with material wealth on earth. There's plenty of that around, especially in the States. In other words, precisely the opposite of what Jesus has just said in verse 21 to the man kneeling before him. Give away all that you have. So what's going on? I think the answer begins in the way that Jesus teaches. True to the cultures of the time, he speaks in images and in pictures. Often not as reaching an end point. That's the end of my argument. No more to be said. But rather as a, a starting point a way into exploring and reflecting on an expansive and beautiful truth, allowing it to slow cook within you, within our hearts. In verse 17, the man asks about inheriting eternal life. And Jesus could have just said, actually, you can't. You can't make an inheritance happen. There's nothing you can do, it's pure gift. It's what you receive as an act of generosity by somebody else, like my holiday was. We're not talking about doing here, but being. And Jesus skillfully and lovingly begins where the man is. He's probably a lawyer and he starts with the law of Moses. Because for the man, this was the end point. Do this, obey this, get that. But Jesus says, well, OK, that's good. You've kept the commandments. Now give away all you have. And give to me all that you are. And Jesus says this not in a, a harsh or a guilt-inducing way. But look at verse 21. An amazing few words. Jesus, looking at him, loved him. Jesus says this not as a telling off, but as a gift to the man that what he gained in the life and the love of Jesus would be far more than anything that he might own now. And in response, Peter says in verse 28, Lord, we've done all that already. We've left everything and followed you. And Jesus says, well, even that, good though it is, that's not quantifiable either. It's not about doing having, even giving. It's about being, belonging. When I take a wedding, which I do several times a year, I do something a little bit naughty. At the exchange of rings, I swap around two of the vows. All that I am, I give to you. All that I have, I share with you, are what the book says. But for me, the full power of the meaning of these vows in a kind of good rhetorical way should be in the very last line. 
So I invite the couple to say, all that I have, I share with you. All that I am, I give to you. All that you have can be quantified. All that I am is a pure and selfless gift. And it's what Jesus gives to us. How do we inherit eternal life? by being a child of God, by being you. When do we inherit it? Here and now. This is the thought and the truth that is at the very heart of our communion service, of our Eucharist. Jesus gives us this sacramental space, this liminal space where earth and heaven meet, as a space in which to come and in that moment give ourselves entirely into the real presence of God. Even if we don't feel anything amazing when we take the bread and the wine, God's pure grace enables our intention to be a pure and sufficient sacrifice of worship. So we can come to our communion with our concerns, with our pride, with our failures, with our questions and our doubts and our wounds. And in that moment of consummation, we receive our inheritance in the bread of heaven, pure sacramental life and love and in the true nature of of God this is only the beginning because we say at the end of the service we take this sacrament into the world go in peace to love and serve the Lord out there in the world on the way back from my holiday, I listened to an amazing talk by Rowan Williams. He doesn't do any other kind of talk. And it was about renewing our sacramental living. He talks about the preciousness of that gift, that both we and the church to which we belong have a special role in the world. We are graced by God to hold that liminal space between heaven and earth. That's the space in which we live. All that is full of life, all that is true of love, the very essence of God. We hold that, we become that in this mad and marvellous world. And this means both in our churches that the sacred space of our church is where people can come and touch God, even if they don't know it, even if they don't attend it, uh, intend it, to be close to God's presence. And at Chalcom, this happens daily. The church is open every day. I'm very rarely there without someone coming in and sitting for a while. At St Stephen's, we're just beginning a project to reorder the interior. Yes, we'll make it a better equipped building, ready to be adaptable and a useful place for our community. But I think more importantly, a place that's gonna be open more than a scant few hours a week for people to come and to be in God's presence. In our church, in our lives, like the Arga, a place that draws, that invites, a place that is ever present in its slowness, in its solidity, in its warmth and its welcome. So coming back to that apparent disjunction in Jesus' words, it's in our being aware of this gift, this offering of ourselves, that knowing that God is present in us, it's in this that Jesus will multiply now 
God's life and love in us, more than we can ever hope or imagine. And the more we share by being who God is calling us to be, the deeper and the wider will be God's presence in us. Do you want that? Do you want to know that that love of Jesus deeply within you, the centre of your warmth and your welcome, a reassurance, Jesus looking at you, loves you. And don't you want to be that presence for others? We see all the needs of the world and we can do our little bit most of the time, but we can be far more. We can be that place of hope and joy, of honesty and kindness in the world. It's what I pray for constantly. During lockdown, I would go down to St Mary's and sit outside for an hour or so during the week to make sure that only one person went into the church at once. Remember that social distancing. And in all the months that I did this, I never spent one hour alone at the church. And I think one of my favourite encounters was with a runner, a woman in her 40s who jogged past the church and stopped and we chatted. And it wasn't long before she said that she wasn't religious in any way. Then as we talked, she told me that during the past few years, her son had been treated for a life-threatening illness. And he'd come through it okay, and now he was fully healed. But it had been a really tough and worrying time. She said that she'd often run past the church, and most of the times had gone down to the holy well in the garden and just sat on the edge and put a hand in the water and just left it there. Sometimes she said she'd sat there for maybe an hour or more. She maybe wouldn't have put it like this, but in that moment, she'd left her life, all that she knew and all that she had. She'd been drawn by the agar of God's love, She'd followed the way of Jesus and inherited eternal life. I'm going to read a prayer from this book, The City is My Monastery by Richard Carter. I'll tell you a bit more about him later. It's called Broken Bread. The most perfect act is one of simple presence as simple as a piece of shared bread. Do you want to save the world? Jesus saves it with a piece of broken bread. We are so busy looking for more complex solutions and methods of control that we miss the being with. What should you do? That is not a question. Who am I? That is the question. You are the bearer of Christ. You are bread for the world. Just stay with anything that you were curious about or that pricked your interest. And just hold it before God. You don't have to think it through. Just be present.
loving God, I pray for my dear sisters and brothers and for myself that we may know what it means to leave behind all the distractions of this world, all the things that have a grasp and a grab on us, and to look to you, to know ourselves held in the warmth of your presence, of your Trinity. So we hold before you, our dear ones, all that we love and pray for, in all the places and situations they are. We pray for the life of this good earth. We pray for healing for our climate. And we pray for a worldwide inclination towards the good of our living planet. Pray for places of conflict, so many of them. For all the fear that's surrounding what might happen. We pray you enter the hearts of those who make decisions for war and that you would weave peace into them. This week we pray for the peacemakers, those who are in talks seeking to persuade compassion, non-vengeance. Pray for our churches, St Stephen's, St Mary's. Pray for our schools, St Stephen's, that has a, an inspection this week by the religious Ofsted on Thursday. We pray for that visit and all of us who will talk to the inspector and especially for the children. And we bring to God those who we know who need our prayer at the moment, who need God's healing touch. Loving God, be close to Bob and Caroline, Rosalind, Tori, Simon, Paul and Ken. Be close to Bridget and Brian, Mary, Paul and Caroline. And in the space, just hold those you know. You don't have to even say their name or think of their name. Just think of them. Hold them. And we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Do pray for St Stephen's on Thursday. Um, I've got, um, I, I've been talking about hidden treasure, which is our sort of Christian distinctiveness um, with the children over the last couple of weeks. Pray that that would really have taken root in them and that the inspector would have a really brilliant day and that we'd enjoy it, we'd all enjoy it. I'm making lunch, <laughs> I'm making lunch for her. So uh, that'll be good. So Richard Carter is uh, the leader of the Nazareth community. He's at St Martin in the Fields in Trafalgar Square and it's a new monastic community uh, which is dedicated to service and contemplation and I have one in Bath and 
me and a couple of others lead still waters uh, which meets once a month and has a very simple rule of life and richard is coming next week on wednesday uh so where will that be the 16th is it 13 14 yes the 16th and if you want to come along to that then i'll put the uh email address of jackie wise who's one of the other leaders in the um in the description and you can email her and tell her that you're coming we have a meal at six and then richard will speak to us lead us uh, until about half past eight uh, and i really recommend it he's an amazing person amazing interpreter of scripture and a great man of silence so what blessing can i find for you today uh mm. oh this is yeah i think we'll i think we'll have a peaceful one may god be with you in all that you are May you know yourself held between heaven and earth in a single peace. Peace among people, among nations, peace in your home and in your heart. And the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Redeemer and Abiding Spirit be with you and remain with you. And all you love and pray for in this moment and for always. Amen. Have a great week.